So, well, welcome to Omsum Life Design Podcast. Thank you so much for like jumping in and saying yes so quickly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't mind at all, especially you and uh, since my brother knows you as well. Yeah, and, uh, it's, it's just, been some time, right? <laughs> yeah, because I was at that same restaurant, um, Food Shop 45. Oh, yeah. And Brother randomly came through as well, and he was like, "Oh, we used to have like dinner on the third floor on the rooftop with uh, Monta." So, <laughs> yeah, wow. So, how is Hanoi now in this a little bit uh, shaky time when when we don't know what thing what what is going on in the world? Yeah, I think uh, Hanoi recovered like really quickly after the the shutdown because mm -hmm. we had I think, maybe like three three weeks or maybe four weeks of. Uh, social distancing and then after that everything was surprisingly back to normal oh wow so you just had like three four weeks and you're like a little bit of rest and, and all good <laughs> yeah just for april and after that it was it was fine wow so super lucky actually <laughs> i've been i've been teaching yoga like back at the studios since beginning of may yeah and until now so it's been two months but just non-stop teaching so yeah amazing so good to hear that because not not everywhere in the world it's like that so <laughs> yeah. yeah so what i wanted to actually talk about and end this podcast to be about your story about how you came to teaching yoga but let's start with this if i called you um i don't know five years ago when did you start teaching what, what how many years have you been teaching now yeah so i guess it was around five years ago because yeah. now it's july I was in Colombia, Medellin. Uh -huh. I was working for Pro then, and I was just doing yoga in my living room. So checking out actually uh, Patrick Beach and uh, Tim, like Yoga with Tim's YouTube video. I had no idea what I was doing then because even a down dog was very hard for me. <laughs> yeah, so it was, but I had a very spacious bedroom and a living room uh -huh. in, in, in Colombia. So I, I was just randomly checking out youtube videos and uh, i was like yeah let's try to do some yoga and what about your work life what were you doing for for work for because that was then after new york or because you were in new york for some time as well right yeah i was interning for for uh, venture capital so we were doing like uh investments and investments in uh, startups and after that i was gonna go to new york city for my full-time job in october so yoga was just like a hobby. Mm -hmm. And if I and if I asked you to introduce you at that time, it's like, hey, come on the podcast. What would you say? It's like, hi, my name is. I do this, this, this. What was what was your story then? <laughs> so back then, I, I was gonna be like a full time associate at uh, PwC in New York City. So for their internship in Boston a year before, I was doing uh, tax, and then after that, I was gonna go into their uh, audit and advisory business and doing that full time in New York City. So, and then the internship was like, like just a peek into the investments and uh, venture capital firm world, which I wanted to get more experience. So from there I could get more experience in New York City working and then networking and then having that onto my profile. And then I've always wanted to be in Latin America, so I applied for the internship, and uh, it was it was a great time. Mm -hmm. And I didn't speak Spanish, but I wanted to learn. So <laughs> being what? in that environment forced yeah. me to do a lot. And how would you from from now, like from that time, how would you introduce yourself today? What would you say? Because that's I oh, I, I, love, I just love your story. <laughs> yeah, no, thank, you. appreciate it. So today, I I guess I. I don't teach yoga full time. <laughs> I teach yoga like three, three classes a day, which can be quite That's a lot. A lot. For That's a lot. Yeah, like fifteen hours a week. That that can count as full time. But I feel like I still got time to do other things, uh, to work on like my investment portfolios, to uh, to help my brother out with his side projects, and uh, invest in his startups. And even though me and my brother are in very two different industries, but it, it feels like we can uh, support each other a lot. Yeah, I, I mean, I wouldn't call myself a. I mean, I wouldn't. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. 
Yeah, no, that's just a little bit of connection breaking somewhere, but yeah, you're back now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I am so, uh, uh, an uh, fitness enthusiast, so that's how I would introduce myself. Uh -huh. uh, I, I would call myself a traveler. I try to travel every uh, two or three months, and yeah, I, I like to experiment with a lot of different styles of uh, fitness and uh, lifestyles even nutrition wise as well and uh, yeah <laughs> there's a lot of things to uh, to experiment in what life have you been into, into lately like maybe this year what have you been you said like you know you're like experimenting with different lifestyles nutrition and this and that and what has been like the latest experiment or something you've been like really into okay so the latest is funny i think when you met me i was a vegan Maybe yeah, I don't remember. I, w I was mostly eating vegetarian food, so I would I would hang around those places where they serve that food, <laughs> like Love Hut. Yeah, because I remember we had lunch or something, or had food at a Jalis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that still there? Yeah, I think so. But they, uh, I think, uh, they sold it to another owner or something mm -hmm. like now the previous owner, I think. Uh, but yeah, so I was vegan at that time and I was vegan in New York City when I was living there for about like a year and then still vegan in Vietnam for about another year and a half, like when uh, I met you. But then um, about like a year ago, I transitioned into like actually a vegetarian and then pescatarian. So I was eating fish. And then now I'm actually uh, experimenting with uh, the carnivore diet. <laughs> uh -huh. How yeah, does so it feel? How, how is your journey to all that? Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. I feel like uh, I have uh, energy. I train. I feel stronger and better. I think it works for some people. It might not work for others. But yeah, I used to identify myself a lot as as a vegan and uh plant-based and and all that but just going to car uh, going carnivore i guess i was also influenced by a lot of friends and uh, i just wanted to try out something new and mm -hmm. who knows maybe i'll i'll do iron man when i'm 35 and uh being a, you know <laughs> yeah um how did it feel like mentally or or like were you a little bit like oh my gosh but i've been like so many years this and now i transferred to another because that's what usually i'm interested in you know like people going i think it's easier to go vegan than from vegan back to eating meat like that's super brave <laughs> yeah well well i know this guy on instagram and i was hanging out with a lot of uh, friends who were on a carnivore diet because it's funny i used to host Oops. I used to host uh, Mark Das, so I don't I don't think he would mind me uh, sharing his story. So he was also mm -hmm. vegan before, and he was super skinny. And when I had him over in Hanoi, and I was you know taking him around, and I was hosting him for uh, for a handstand workshop. It's funny. The only places that I took him out, like outside my house, <laughs> was to the butcher store, <laughs> just so you could buy like meat. It's funny. I mean, yeah, and, and, and then to my gym where we would usually train together. But yeah, <laughs> so I was like impressed by his like discipline and that he was only eating meat. And when I took him to like a steak, uh, steak restaurant, like he wouldn't even eat his vegetables. <laughs> he wouldn't eat really? carrots, the green peas. Yeah, he was just eating meat. So I was surprised and like I was like, I wasn't in, in, intrigued by that intrigued lifestyle because like, that was quite not, it, it wasn't balanced. But then mm -hmm. when I look more into it and when I read more about like um, the carnivore diet through Origins uh, Nutrition, which is uh, by Doms on Instagram. So also who was a friend of Mark and he mm -hmm. introduced both together and, uh, and I kind of like the idea of trying something and just going 180 yeah that's crazy but well, like i'm saying that's super brave yeah <laughs> it's, it's going like vegan that's like, like oh that's extreme that's difficult but going from vegan i'm like oh my gosh my mind would just like probably shoot me every day I'm like, 
Yeah. I'm mostly, I'm, I'm vegetarian, like 100%, but like even going to vegan and then back to vegetarian when you judge your every piece of, of cheese that you have, uh, you know, right. you're like, Ugh. Yeah, well, going vegetarian, and, and you've been vegetarian throughout these whole years, right? Yeah, so it's been like, I think like, what, five, since Vietnam, like since the second time I went to Vietnam, so yeah, something, that may be more, five, six years, yeah. Okay, wow, yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely went from vegan to vegetarian, and then pescatarian, reintroducing like fish into it, hmm. and then like just slowly introducing meat, and I felt fine, which was weird. But yeah, it somehow works for me that I can, I guess I can kind of thrive on both diets and or different yeah. kind of diet. But body-wise, do you notice something? You said like you feel stronger uh, now than you felt before. And with the yeah. workout and everything, yeah? Like strength and uh, muscle size and like, like her high hypertrophy training and all that. And I didn't feel less for anything because I guess I was also doing flexibility training all day uh, not all day but like every day as well so that yeah. maintained my flexibility super that's very interesting um, how about tell me your story from like when you came back from abroad to Vietnam and you started and it's like hey I'm a yoga teacher now how was that journey to come into I mean Vietnamese society probably it has changed a lot now since past few years, but when you went back, it wasn't like a thing to do to be a yoga teacher. Like it wasn't yeah. like what your, what your parents expected, right? Yeah, definitely. It wasn't my, what my parents expected at all because my parents all work for the government. So they're government officials and uh, they went to university. My dad has actually a PhD from like a very prestigious Russian university. And during his time going to a Russian University was like going to Harvard, so lots of expectations. But yeah, when I quit my job in New York City to actually pursue yoga, to work for Lululemon, and then uh, later to work for uh, Yoga Journals, which all those experiences I think prepared me a lot mentally to come back to Vietnam and just to indulge and immerse in the culture and and actually build a yoga community here of young people. I think that all those experiences prepared me a lot mentally. And when I came back, I was very fortunate to meet a few old high school friends. And it was, I still remember, like, I met up with my high school friend and he, he went to a spa and he was like, this place is so zen. And he knows the owner. I think um, you should check it out and ask her if she would, like, let you rent the studio. And I talked to the owner. She was super cool about it. She didn't even charge me anything. <laughs> well, I was actually charging my students uh, to, to take my yoga classes and yeah it just hit it off I think I opened my class five days after I got back to Vietnam so it was a seriously <laughs> process yeah and then I had my brother do the video marketing I had a video marketing of of the plays of my skills and all that and uh, yeah I think I had more than 20 people signed up for my class <laughs> the first few weeks so I think it was, a, it, it was a great start. I wasn't really expecting anything, but I knew it was kind of like what I wanted to do. But I also didn't know what was going to happen or I didn't have any expectations. I didn't know of anyone who was doing this in Vietnam. So it was a new experience for me. So you didn't also have the chance to compare. I was like, oh, that guy's doing this and that the guy's doing that and then I should go like this or, or stuff like that. I lost you for a second. Um, so I was saying, so you didn't have the, the chance to even like compare yourself with anyone else. It's like, oh, someone is doing this in yoga, someone is doing that. You just like came back, jumped in and did your, your New York style. Yeah. So <laughs> because the way I practice yoga in New York City was, was a lot like, you know, like hip hop yoga. And that was what I really connected to and connected with because I love hip hop, I love yoga and it's and the yoga community in New York City is a lot of young people. While in Vietnam I think it's mostly people my mom's age or 
or ladies who are a little bit younger, like maybe in their 40s, 50s. And there's almost no demographics for the like for for the younger people so i thought that would be a great market to to enter mm. and yeah I, and it still i still think it was one of the best decisions i've ever made so far at least <laughs> to, to to enter and to kind of in a way be a pioneer here and how how were your parents reaction and your maybe the friends that that saw you in a different that expected you to come back from New York and do finance or be some someone else yeah well most of my uh, high school friends were somewhat somewhat very supportive because we always did our own thing anyway because everyone was either having their own business or someone was doing their souvenir shop or someone was like they like like just become like an underground rapper <laughs> despite yeah. having like a degree in You know, it's funny. I went to my uh, friend's show last week, and uh, now he's he's just rapping, and and he does audio and sound system, and somehow that really yeah. links, right? Wow! Like, like, like audio engineering in a way, and not having to do anything with like civil engineering or his his degree back in the states. And I thought that was something cool as well. And you know, not everyone can be a banker, right? I mean, everyone can can be a banker. Uh, an investment banker even but you know if everyone was an investment banker like and you go to a social party not many people would have different experience to share since everyone's quite the same so i thought you know not necessarily wanting to be different but i just thought that hanoi and this community needed something that i could give and mm -hmm. the fun the experience that i had in new york city is just It's just so unreal and I just wanted to bring it back and, and share with people because I've never really seen it anywhere else in the world even. How, how do you feel? How have you grown like as a community throughout this time? Do you feel like you have your little New York City feeling kind of that that community is your feeling that now? Yeah, I, I feel excited every time I go to class, even if one people shows up. 20, 30, 40, it doesn't really matter because it feels like people show up for, for me and uh, for themselves. And uh, that's what I like about it because sometimes if you, it's different. If you, if you go teach at a studio, it's, it's fun as well. And it's somewhat uh, stable, right? So you don't have to do uh, management work. You don't have to recruit students and all that. But I actually do everything from uh, messaging, uh, like replying to messages on Facebook uh, pages and uh, like collecting fees, actually uh, checking students in. So, and I try to ma manage everything. And I think uh, it, it is work, but it's also work that I don't like not enjoy. Mm -hmm. So from, and, from uh, A to Z. <laughs> yeah, like, like pretty much almost everything. And like today I just decided to like host uh, another yoga retreat as well. And that's another thing I like about Uh, teaching in Vietnam is that Vietnam is just so beautiful. You have nature, you have mountains, you have ocean, you, you almost have almost everything except for maybe like snow, in like, unless it snows in like Sapa. <laughs> yeah, like once a year. <laughs> where, where are you hosting the next retreat? Uh, so we're going down to like Tenghua. Whereabouts is that? <laughs> so like more like up of Hanoi and it's about like five hours away and we're going to mm -hmm. this Uh, beach spot which is like the up and coming in the last few years so it's less people still nice pristine and yeah I love it because last year like the latest retreat that I did was last year because after that was like dead holidays and then COVID season so pretty much the half of the, the half of this year is just you know there's just not much happening right so but last yeah. year we all an island and it was like isolated it was pretty much like my yoga team on that whole island it was like amazing wow yeah, yeah. There's so many cool spots in vietnam to like to explore and I, i i could go by myself but i don't think it'd be fun <laughs> it's like having yeah. a big family so that's another thing i like about uh doing yoga in vietnam is that you can do yoga retreats and it doesn't have to be like a luxury retreat or anything complicated it's just a group of people and young people So that's fun. beautiful and also i think it's it's such a great combination because when i remember 
you know, coming from, uh, from another country, you go to Vietnam and you just like explore all the time because it's like, I'm there once in a lifetime, I have to see everything. And when I asked, you know, like people, where have they been? They actually don't travel that much. So now you bring both together, like this yoga experience and the travel experience. Because Vietnamese travel, but they, at that time, I remember it was like, yeah, to some places, maybe sometimes it wasn't as like popular. And it's a great, I, I see a great combination there for the retreats and, and yoga. Yeah. Yeah, and I think like nothing beats traveling and doing yoga, right? And it's just not a spiritual, uh, it's just not a physical practice anymore, but it's also quite spiritual and it's just your own body. You know, you don't have to bring like a barbell or like a few hundred kilograms of weight like in a van, right? <laughs> Some of my friends do that. It's super cool. They try to do like Olympic lifting by the beach. And I mean, that's cool, but it, it's not necessarily for everyone, right? Not everyone can can do those things. and. Yeah. you know and and i think like uh yoga is just is 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 fun and it's for everyone not not everyone is necessarily for yoga but it's always there for everyone whenever they're in need in uh, in times of difficulties and if if you know and obviously it doesn't have to be like a physical form of practice it doesn't have to be a shtanga or anything it's just be three or five minutes of meditation every day right so i think it's very accessible it's super accessible. I remember when I started doing, I was like, this is actually super practical. I don't even need like a yoga mat and I don't need like running shoes. I was like, okay, I can actually do this because I can travel anywhere and you can just be like, you know, do yoga wherever you, you don't know, and you don't like literally need anything. How did you, um, if someone else is, for example, in your situation, coming somewhere, thinking of building a yoga community, like what will be your what could they learn from your mistakes or maybe from your learning lessons, like how to build a yoga community in a place where, you know, you've been away from or maybe in a new place? Mm. I think uh, that's, that's also a, a hard question because I think I just went in with no expectations at all. I didn't know how many people will even show up to class, but I just came back with, with like very, um, with just a lot of, like hunger, hunger for, for proving myself to maybe like my parents or even to prove to myself that I can uh, almost achieve whatever I would pr want to pursue. The mistakes, the first mistakes that uh, I think I made early on was uh, renting studios. So you need to have like, like uh, good contracts. You have to make sure like the owner is, is also interested in, in having you long term. Because what happened with the first uh, studio was that she was about to sell the studio. So I think I was there for maybe three months. So I was there teaching for about two months and a half. And then I did my 300 hour in India. I came back, teach maybe like two months. And then she just decided to sell the place. <laughs> so I had to find other uh, studios and uh, rent different uh, hours because I actually don't rent the whole studio but i rent mm. so sometimes they could be uh, doing zumba in there they could be practicing ballet they could be uh doing like um aikido or any kind of like martial arts so that's also um what you need to kind of like uh, seek out in in studios like the available time slots uh the contract the terms with with the owner see if it's a, a good location also if if it's convenient for people to to attend you know like sometimes like right in the center of a noise much better than way far out even though there could be high demands in that area so most of my uh, spots are quite in like the center of hanoi and not too far out but they're a little bit spread out mm -hmm. so it's like my here and then one studio here one studio here, one studio here. so i'm kind of like in the middle of every every studio because in Vietnam, if people travel for 15 minutes, they consider that far, you know? Well, yeah. I'm in New York City. I go an hour and a half to take an hour yoga class. And, you know, I still have to accept that. <laughs> I know. It's crazy, huh? <laughs> so I guess uh, just that. And then I guess also just putting up ads and sharing your story to see how many people get inspired by that and and how the interaction goes and and maybe also seek out like 
like what kind of like competition they have in uh, in in that city as well. I think when I opened my studio, not many young people were teaching yoga, so I think I also had a competitive advantage, which is cool. Mm-hmm. I mean, now more more young people are teaching, even my students, you know, who took my yoga classes and then they do a yoga teacher training, opening classes, and I like. I welcome all competition, you know, because competition obviously is very healthy and it also keeps you on your edge of you, like, improving more on, upon yourself, uh, technical skills, knowledge-wise and all that. So I think it's, uh, it's, it's healthy. And it's also, like, quite minimal investment, you know, like, to, to rent a studio in Vietnam is not that expensive. Sometimes, like, I'd be fine if I break even, <laughs> you know? Yeah, or, or if you, like, if you rent per hour, that's also, like, it's a, it's a good idea, what you're saying, because sometimes people might think, like, oh, I need a studio for myself, you know, like, for the whole time. Um, how do you manage the community? What about that? Do you do some get-togethers or after or before classes or anything else? Like, how do you, like, more like the community aspect of, of teaching yoga as well? As, as a community, I try to bring in different activities. So I've had, like, last night, actually, I had an Afro, so, like, African dance. I saw that. It was so fun. It was fun, right? I, I, I've done a few, like, during... Uh, during social night at like uh, at the Latin dance club that I usually go to. And there's this lady who always does Afro because her kids are actually uh, black and Asian. So Blasian, <laughs> they're super cute. It's uh, it's the baby on, 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 on my social media feed. Everyone yeah. loves it, super cute. And so Afro dance is also something uh, that's very uh, different and also very new, but it, ties in with movement so I think it's perfect for yoga it's fun it makes people not have to think about uh, stress and work on Monday I like to bring in land dancing as well so that's also nice like uh, bachata salsa just people knowing the basics so they you know if they travel or they go on a cruise like hot long cruise right and it's like salsa night so at least they can dance or like socialize so it's fun also like also like the dance somewhat says a lot about the the, the culture as well and uh, and the spanish songs are just just nice you know they have also like a minor and a major key so it's also uh, both fun and it's also sad but it's sad but it's fun so mm-hmm. very um and emotions and then i try to host also like gatherings like we would go to the pool together i would try to teach them how to swim if if some of them don't know how to swim we do a uh, sub yoga in hotai just pretty fun oh, really? like some yeah yeah some girls would just not know how to swim but they're like no nah, I'm, I'm just gonna put on my bikini i'm gonna get some pictures cool yoga pictures and yeah i'm all set and, like i love that like they're, they're fearless <laughs> you know <laughs> so fun yeah. oh my gosh yeah, yeah I've, yeah, I've done two of that, so that was also very fun. And then also um, vegan restaurant gatherings. So we try to check out uh, different vegan spots in Hanoi. And not, I mean, to, to not necessarily promote that lifestyle, but to give them a taste of what vegan food is like. And it is up to them, obviously, to choose the lifestyle that, that they want to lead. So mm. I think that was, <laughs> so I think that's fun. And then, yeah, yoga retreats, so everyone just looks forward to that so much it's like uh like an escape from reality and <laughs> you get to be together with uh with young people with people in the class that maybe they don't get to socialize with because sometimes you go to yoga class with your yoga face on and your yoga personality and then you come out of class right you come out of class feeling blissful and relaxed and calm but then you don't get to communicate much with people because sometimes that's just the mood you're in. Like, uh, I just don't really want to talk to anyone. I just want to be myself. And that's cool too. What's your um, experience with the retreats so far? Like, what would you also suggest to someone who's just starting? Because I remember, like, I've done now, what, this is going to be this in the September 6th or 7th retreat. And I yeah. learned so much. Like, from my first retreat, I'm like, oh, so many mistakes. You know, like, 
not mistakes, but like, oh my gosh, I could have done like, you know, better. Um, yeah. What would you say? Like, what are your biggest also like learning lessons or what would you suggest to someone like, don't do this if you're just starting in the retreat area, if you're a yoga teacher? I think uh, doing retreats, uh, I think the, the most important thing is to figure out the logistics and then deciding on everything because my retreats are a little bit different from possibly other retreats. So like other retreats are like you have like a set itinerary, right? And this is what all the activities that we're going to do. And then, uh, okay, this is the money that you have to pay. Well, for us, actually, it, the money, sometimes I would want like a deposit at first, but everything is split between everyone so mm -hmm. actually profit from it i have to pay my own money actually <laughs> too <laughs> and uh, but also uh, it brings the cost down so a lot of people can attend so we usually have sometimes like 25 to like over 30 people coming to a retreat which i think is uh, is, is super cool mm -hmm. and then also hiring um renting buses uh, experienced drivers are are key because it's very hard to drive in like areas in Vietnam and sometimes like we also witness a few accidents and I do not want that to happen ever so uh, that's that's also uh, key and then uh, also figuring out like the accommodation so because some people don't like to sleep in a room all together say like in yeah. a homestay but in Vietnam that's quite typical <laughs> And some people just likes to be in a hotel, but man, like you go to a, to, to a, like a mountain place and how are you expecting to have your own room, right? So it's very hard. And then uh, food, is it gonna be vegan food or is it gonna be local food? So that's also hard because there are some places in Vietnam, if you were to eat vegan food, it would just be vegetables. And I don't think yeah. you would have enough energy just by eating one specific type of vegetable not even have like enough carbs maybe just that vegetable and rice to go hiking or to go mountaining the next day so it's 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 stressful yeah i remember it was so much tofu if i ever like left hanoi it was just like this tofu in the in the tomato sauce and that was all i could get as a like because every other food would get, have meat in it so i was like okay like i'm tired by this like just because i'm outside and traveling somewhere it's like is this the only like vegetarian food i can have <laughs> but yeah well, yummy. Outside, yeah outside of hanoi it's very hard to get like a variety of vegetarian and vegan food right yeah yeah um what is, the, um, if I asked you to dream a little bit, what would be your perfect uh, Viet Yogi future? What would you like to, in the next couple of years, build or experience, like build maybe, I don't know, like a, your own studio or maybe this big retreat, maybe there's something completely else? Yeah, I would definitely want to expand it uh, throughout the whole country, but it would definitely uh, take time. It takes time and takes human power, you know? And to have someone to, teach and who I can trust and believe in their teaching and in their philosophies in their lifestyle and having them kind of like represent because obviously Viet Yogi is not it's not Bin Yogi you know because <laughs> and people often mistaken me like think that my name is Viet when when it's not you know it's not about me and it's about yeah. a group of young people and and that's what I like about it because anyone can represent it and I would like to bring it to other, you know, provinces and cities in, in Vietnam because there I see a lot of growth and potential. Even other places near Hanoi, like some uh, provinces and uh, some uh, smaller cities, yoga is starting to be big. But then again, it's still within like the population of like our mom's age. You know? mm -hmm. But Hanoi, <laughs> so, so the age group, the age group in Hanoi at the moment, is it like, what would you say? Yeah, it's, it's more young people are doing it, but I would say the young people who are doing it are actually mostly are in my community. I would say like at least 90%. So yeah, and uh, other people, even we have like some really young teachers, like maybe they're 17, they're 18, they're teaching yoga already and, and that's cool too, but they're also teaching yoga to older ladies. So the style is different. 
not that older ladies can't do like strong arm balances. It's just, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's a little bit more uh, difficult for them, I would say. And uh, it's, it's hard for them to be open-minded enough to actually take in what the teacher is, is teaching. And I think for the young people here in Hanoi, it, it takes a little bit of time because it's funny, Vietnam is very, um, is very much about aesthetics. Right, and and there's nothing wrong with like you mean like you mean the end product, not the learning, and like being in like all all yeah. like this, and but they want to be like straight away and the beautiful pose. Exactly, and and I think um, that was how I started yoga too, because when uh, I was doing arm balances or I was watching on YouTube people or Instagram people doing arm balances, I was like, damn, like I want to do that too, and it was hard, very hard, and I thought. Anything that's hard is, is worth pursuing. But also, sometimes people do yoga and, you know, you take maybe a month of yoga and you see no progress or minimal progress. But you haven't reached that breaking point where you get everything because the learning curve is just so steep still. And, but for, for gym, it's different, right? If you go to the gym regularly, one month, two months, three months, like eat a mm. decent diet, like you can transform your body so quickly. And yeah. that's what aesthetic, that's what I mean by uh, aesthetic. So a lot of people are still interested in, uh, in, in the gym, in lifting weight and in transforming their body because in a way they still have a preconception about yoga that yoga is, is very feminine and it's about mm. flexibility. They don't have the flexibility or they can't meditate because you know they can't sit still or they'll just fall asleep so it's just myths and it takes time i guess to break those myths mm -hmm. so yeah so you would like to like to bring this to other provinces towns what else is there for your for your future viet yogi plan so Intention. i also beat outside uh, vietnam as well so i think that's very fun I've been inspired by one of my friends whose name is Calvin Sun. And uh, so he was speaking a lot at my university when I was still a student back in the days, like from 2010 to 2014. And he was becoming a doctor while still able to, so he was doing med school, but he was still traveling the world. He was, he was I think he went to North Korea, being one of the rare Americans. He was going to Afghanistan, Iraq. He was going to all the cool places. And I remember seeing him and he was very charismatic. He, he was cool. He was break dancing. He was beatboxing. He was doing all the cool like Asian stuff. Like he, he was, he was being a, like a cool Asian kid and, but all, yet also being very successful and had a lot of achievements. And I thought like that was, you know, all of that is very achievable. And I want to, do uh, travels outside of Vietnam with, I would say like um, about 10 people as well. Like, I don't know, do Scandinavia, do uh, mm -hmm. not do the like States. Inter inter like, inter <laughs> international <laughs> retreats kind of, yeah. And, and travels and all that. So I think that would be fun. Like a tour, but also you have to do like a lot of like, not so much hiking, but like, I would say like strenuous spiritual practices. Maybe I would like to do like the Wim Hof retreat with, mm -hmm. uh, with Wim himself and learn from it and see how that goes. And I think like he, he takes on about like, I guess like 10 or like less than pe 10 people as well for his retreats. I think it's a very uh, close knit group. And all they do is, I think they hike a lot, but like with just yeah. shorts on a lot of breathing work, which I think is really cool. And also breathing techniques and all that is not too famous and not too popular in Vietnam or it's not popularized yet. So I think that's also something I can learn from. Super. Yeah, Wim Hof is like, I've, I have had some podcasts with the guys who teach the Wim Hof method. Just the last one uh, with Joy House, he just spent 10 days in darkness, but he's like a, uh, Wim Hof instructor and and I've been practicing Wim Hof for some time. It's so good. It's, 
Uh, so yeah. you're saying yeah, breath work is still, do you have some breath work teacher in, in Hanoi or is it also just like someone uh, who comes in and then goes? Uh, not really. Yeah. We, we mm. don't have, I, I would say the closest destination would probably be Bali, which they mm. have a direct flight from Hanoi now to Bali. So yeah, is, you're so lucky. <laughs> and, it's, and it's affordable. So it's, it's good. <laughs> it doesn't break the bank. I can just yeah. go over there for do a workshop or whatever and then come back the next day and still be able to teach. I think that's fun. But I also was also inspired a lot by Dylan Werner. So I got to to chill with him and host him for five days and it was five full days with him. It was super intense, but I learned so much. And I think uh thanks to him that I I'm I'm doing like the Wim Hop method every morning when I wake up. So and I don't know if it's working, but <laughs> but I I trust in the process. Mm. And I feel like I put time into it and, and I feel like my breast retentions are much stronger now that it helps a lot with uh, strength training and also with swimming even. I could probably just swim a few laps without having to breathe. Wow. So, yeah. So you're going to be the, ne the next, you started with yoga and now you're going to be the next uh, messenger for the Wim Hof method or for the breathing as well. <laughs> I don't know yet. But I, I, I think it's fun <laughs> to, it's to so fun, learn yeah. techniques and how, um, so the question, yeah, you said retreats and, and maybe expand, do something international. I, a fun question. What do you see that is there something, you know, like what you have in Vietnam and if you would, you know, Americans do like yoga with goats and, you know, yoga with beer or something, would there be something that just for fun you would love to do it someday because it's so Vietnamese but then you can add yoga to it and it's just like you know would blow everyone's mind oh well definitely not yoga with pho <laughs> yeah because i was like um yeah that would be like yeah. a little bit <laughs> uh um, pho cocktail maybe <laughs> but uh yeah well actually that uh that triggered the thought in, in, in my head and I forgot to mention it, but I would love to do like music festivals too. Like, like, like quest, like quest, but mm -hmm. like, you know, but strictly like yoga and spiritual. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of music festivals um, elsewhere and in say, say like in, uh, in Costa Rica and uh, they have cool DJs who play like just straight up music, but then it's, it's kind of like spiritual music, but you got like the EDM beats and it's it's uh, trap, hip hop. I think that would also be very fun in Vietnam because people love going to festivals here. And by introducing kind of like yoga in those certain music festivals and then hopefully later on it blossoms into something bigger on a, on a bigger scale. I think that would be a great way to introduce yoga to the young community as well. And that's something I really want to do as well. And before I was actually invited to collab on a project of doing like DJ and DJ music and yoga, like, like yoga in a, like a club and then you start doing yoga. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it fell through because the, like there was a, because it fell through because after that there was a moon festival, music festival that people just, you know, took way too much drug and there were a lot of uh, consequences after that. So yeah. Next to, time. Um, yeah, hopefully soon. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds fun. And I'm I'm now joining there since um, all the states they're locked down. They're doing a lot of stuff online, and they're doing yoga dance every Sunday. So it's like yeah. it's today in like seven eight hours. So probably doesn't fit the Hanoi time, but it's amazing because they have a DJ on live set, and then there's a yoga class, and and at the end it just like it turns into big dance floor and. Uh, they have a, one is Daybreakers called and that's you can check it out on Instagram as well. They do it in Florida and Miami area, and then LA mm -hmm. is like like another one. They do it. It's, it's super amazing. It's deep exhale for the LA, and it's a it's a different energy. I was long time I was kind of like no yoga is like you know you have to just like sit and be meditative and everything. But this dancing aspect, like if you put it like if you do both. It's just like my body is just like exploding and like how, how can I like feel any better than this? No. So yeah. Um, so is the, in New York when I was working for Yoga Journal 
And I was also like the coordinator for this workshop event where everyone had like the silent headphones on. Oh yeah. yeah. So you can't, you can't hear it from outside, but like, like people who are doing yoga, they would hear it and it was, it was an amazing experience. So I thought it was also fun to like look, also to like put the headphone on to hear the instructor and then feel the music and see everyone flowing on their, uh, yeah, doing their own thing. Yeah, that's that's a fun one as well. Yeah, sil silent disco and silent yoga. <laughs> oh, no silent yoga. Oh, it's so good to good to talk to you and get a little bit of Viet Vietnam feeling. Tell me, tell me a little bit. How do you think Hanoi has changed in the past few years? Because I haven't been there for the past four years, I think. Uh, what, what have you? I, I what have now grown? What, what is there? What is different? <laughs> What is different? Well, there are definitely a lot more uh, vegan, vegetarian restaurants now. I think almost everywhere. I think it's like, I think it's not as hard to be a vegan or a vegetarian like when, you know, when we first met maybe like four years ago. So that people are more open-minded now. People are more into wellness into uh, spiritual uh, aspects of, of yoga and other uh, different forms. So I think hopefully this trend continues. <laughs> yeah, and well, I think it's growing worldwide. So, you know, it's just a matter of, of time and yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's growing worldwide and it's been growing in the States for like the last 10 years and it just doesn't stop. So, and a lot of people are entering uh, the yoga business now and with uh, clothing or with uh, studio yoga studios opening up. Like my students are even opening like aerial yoga studios. So I thought that, that that's also very uh, creative and, and that's fun. And um, I also enjoy the fact that people are kind of like more interested in movement in, in general, because I think mm. movement is also a big thing in the States. And in Europe, like like movement, not just dancing, but like Edo Portal style, yeah, like movement. Yeah, exactly. I love it. <laughs> no, I think that form of training is is fun. And when people are no longer obsessed with aesthetics, I think they will slowly, slowly switch to movement. Mm. It's funny if, if if you see a rip guy doing like movement, you'll be like, holy shit, like it's cool, you know. So. <laughs> trying to be that guy <laughs> and you know mm -hmm. and and have like like a movement team not necessarily like Edo Portal but uh but to introduce it to to even like people my parents age because like my parents are not going to go to the gym you know they're not interested in it but they would maybe like some form of movement like yoga but like a little bit more intense mm. so uh, mm -hmm. the movement is what's exploding in the world and hopefully it uh, catches fire in Vietnam and I'm hoping to uh, to yeah to, to teach movement in Vietnam as well though I do teach it in class but you know not everyone's interested <laughs> they're like no nah, I just want to take normal yoga classes really do you teach the yeah. animal movements and stuff yeah animal movements along with handstands mm -hmm. and I also know of mine who teach movement like community classes as well but like you know like the attendance is like less than 10 people so mm. again you know people are more uh, concerned with uh, weight loss and aesthetics so yeah so, still, 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 yeah. Still, still number one right but i think it's yeah. everywhere in the world and it's so tangible like you can see that's oh okay if i can lose weight if i can do this if i can see it then okay it's good exactly yeah. and, and rarely see spiritual growth right because you just don't take time to to evaluate yeah. well thank you so much for um for the conversation it's fun it's it's so good to because i i was in shanghai in um when was it january and i was thinking of going to hanoi because i've always you know it's like awesome oh, memory i see like a motorbike on the street here because they're not so popular and i was like Hmm, I miss riding motorbike like those times in Hanoi. I like an old lady those times in Hanoi. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, it's nice and it's so good to hear that all the yoga and that community is growing and that you're you're going with that and leading it, you know. And it's such a blessing. Yeah.
Yeah, thank you, Monta. I, I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully uh, we can meet again soon somewhere in the world and, or maybe in Vietnam even. Hanoi, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Vietnam or maybe some, some of your international um, uh, retreats. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> say, say hi to your brother. <laughs> okay, for sure, yeah.